So now, now we so these are the roughly the various kinds of timers available, and now we take a look at what is known as the counter. Okay. So now the counter is nothing but, frankly speaking, the I mean the the counter is nothing but a timer with an external pulse. So now the in the in the counter also in the counter also there are two registers one is called a preset register and another is a count register. But only thing is that in the timer the timing register is incremented by an internal clock at regular intervals of time. So, the timer is nothing but a counter which counts the timing pulses from an internal clock while for the count register for the for the counter this count you are trying to count something maybe some maybe the, maybe the number of parts produced or the number of parts arrived on a conveyor or or something like that so in which case with every event taking place there is a you have to generate some kind of a pulse using again contacts and sensors now those external pulses in this case will actually uh, uh, augment the count register so that counter is in place of the internal clock pulses which were coming at the timer here we have external pulses which are triggered by the events that we want to count. So, again you have enable reset logic same thing in this case we have what is known as a count logic rather than a timer run logic. So, the count register is, is incremented by 1 every time count logic goes high. So, every time this goes high from 0 the, the count register is incremented by 1 and just like the previous case when the count register value exceeds the preset register value at that time the terminal count is reached and the output coil goes high. So, this is the meaning in some cases it may be a down counter in which case the count register may be loaded with a preset register value and <coughs> it may count down to 0 every time a pulse comes. So, it may be an up counter or it may be a down counter or it may have up or up and down count inputs by which it can have it can be also an up down counter. Some basic uh, a very simple example you have a conveyor into which parts are supplied. <coughs> So, parts are coming from either this machine B or parts of type B are coming and parts of type A are coming. So, you want to implement this logic that run conveyor when parts x parts of A at least x parts of A and y parts of B are on the conveyor at that time the conveyor will run. So, this is what we want to program and the arrival of a part of type B is asserted by this and arrival of a top, top part of type A is asserted by these two sensors. So, what is the logic? So, here is a, so this is an example of using counters. So, you see that we have two counters. First of all, this is the master switch. The moment it goes on this output is asserted. Now, this out now see that when i n 0 0 1 is asserted this i n 0 0 1 also is also is asserted and this i n 0 0 1 is also asserted and this i n 0 0 1 is also asserted. So, when this is 0 everything is 0, but when this goes 1 then all these rungs are enabled and both the timers are enabled. Now, the arrival of part of type B is signified by this and arrival of the part of type A is signified by this. So, this is for A and this is for B. So, every time a part arrives there is a pulse here and the corresponding outputs are incremented. And now, when so the registers are incremented, not the outputs, the 
the registers are incremented. So, when the registers <coughs> when both of when, when this register crosses this output goes high. So, it is in series it is in series. So, op 0 0 3. So, when you put them in series you want that both of them must reach their preset count values only then the conveyor will run. If you put them in parallel it means that if any one of them reaches that preset value then the con then the conveyor will run. So, this is an example where we can use a counter for an industrial problem. This is a nice example of uh, counting how many parts per minute are going on the conveyor let us say which uh, in a way indicates that whether what is the production rate. So, it may be an important management information to uh, you know display what is the production rate. So, what so now this therefore, this is so we want to count how many parts per minute. So, we want to not only keep count parts we want to also count it only over 1 minute of interval after we want the we have press start for this operation. So, obviously, for creating this 1 minute interval we need a timer and for counting the parts we need a counter therefore, it is a mixed timer counter example. So, here we have the timer and here we have the counter both have there here it is loaded to 60 because we are talking about minutes and we are assuming that the internal clock pulses are, are available at every 1 second interval. So, now <coughs> suppose I n 0 0 1 is a switch which you which one can press when he wants a measurement that over the next 1 minute how many parts pa pass. <coughs> So, uh, so when these two are when, when this men, uh, measurement desired contact is enabled at that time both this timer and the counter are enabled. Now, what happens is that uh, so when you say start this is a kind of you know master switch then when you say start time. So, you want to know of within this time of how many parts have passed. So, you start time. So, this goes high and this goes high. Now, this this does not go high. So, this is low. So, now and when this is on this is also on. So, now every time a part arrives you get a pulse. So, the counter goes up In the meantime, after the time has expired, OP001 goes open, goes off. So, th this goes to 0 and then further parts are not counted. So, this when when when, when this is going to 0, when, when this becomes open, whether this here you get a close or not it does not matter this cannot be 0 because these are in in series. So, therefore, at that time you in in the in the counter you have the value you have the value of how many parts have passed over the conveyor in the last minute. These are so we have covered the timer and counter in some detail now we will take a look a very brief look at you know there are arithmetic instructions there may be logical instructions specifically instructions like compare instruction like doing anding oring so all these instructions are available just like a low level language and you can express them in various formats depending on the manufacturer as as i said so in our in our format we are we are saying that by this diagram we are saying that this if you put this rung it will it is a it is a rung for doing the uh, it will when this rung will be executed basically two operands operand 1 and operand 2 will be added and their sum will be put at the location sum provided this enable logic is on and this output coil may be used for various purposes one of them could be that if there is an overflow uh, 
if there is an overflow that has occurred during the summation, then it could go 1. So, it can indicate an error condition and then be used in the further logic. So, this is just an example of add. Similarly, you could have sub, you could have multiply, you could have various other things. This is just one example of the of an uh, arithmetic instruction. Next is data move. So, if you want to again you depict it as a rung because in the RLL everything is a rung. So, in this case you have again the, the data move will take place depending on whether the enabling logic is satisfied or not and then uh, data will move from source to destination and maybe if there is some uh, address failure or something then or maybe after the data has moved actually the, this can become one. So, so, this can also be used for indicating uh, condition after execution. You can have, so this is a data move, you can have various other functions like you can have bit, bit manipulation functions, you can have various kinds of block moves etc. You also have various kinds of logical instructions. So, apart from data transfer, the, the, the last instructions which are very important are program control instructions by which we want to, uh, we want to control, we, we do not want to execute all rungs of the, of the RLL at all times, but rather we want to control whether we can skip some of them or enforce some of their values. So, we have typically to give an example, we have a skip, skipping facility which, so when again when this is enabled, then this skip 001, this is a, this is a very special type of contact. So, it is enabled. When it is enabled, then what it means, what it means is that the next n rung, so you have skip 001 and n is a parameter. So, it means that the next n rungs will not be evaluated, they will when, 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 when this is high, this is the meaning. So, it is like you know, it is like uh, if skip not equal to 1, then, so this is like if, if skip not equal to 1, then. then this will be executed. If skip is equal to 1, as long as it stays 1, the, uh, the next n ranks will not be evaluated and they will be maintained at the, at the old value. Similarly, you can have another, uh, another facility which we call the master control relay, which means that here, I mean this is also a program control statement and it means that whenever the enable logic is satisfied, then this MCR output coil which is a very special output coil is, is excited and which means that the next n rungs will be set to their, their outputs. Each one of them has an output coil here which I have not shown. So, the next output coils, these output coil values will all set to 0. So, without evaluating irrespective of the logic in this branch, if this is excited, then they will be all set to 0, but if it, but if this is not excited, then they will be evaluated normal like normal rungs according to uh, according to normal PLC logic evaluation. This is a, this, there are some special instructions which also are there in a, in a, in a, in a PLC RLL uh, program language. For example, this is a sequencer. So, a sequencer, this is, a, this is actually the sequencer, this is the sequencer. So, the sequencer is a block which can be separately programmed and which nicely executes a sequence of steps every time it is, it is excited. So, let us see what is happening here. So, first of all, this is a master switch which will become on. Let us assume that uh, and suppose this is 
of so first of all what happens is that this goes high goes high when this goes high and this is already low so therefore there is a path from this place to this place and even if this is taken off even if this is taken off this path maintains whenever there is a path here immediately this is enabled and this is this is enabled so when this is enabled what happens is that uh, when this is enabled and this is this is now reset no this is normally closed oh this is normally closed so when this is closed it is already enabled because this is off so therefore and then this op001 goes on so when this op001 goes on it starts timing so after a preset timing this op003 will go high now when this goes high immediately what happens is that you get a pulse here so in the sequencer the sequencer every time it get a, gets a pulse into its step input it 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 executes a particular set of outputs it will exercise okay so particular set of outputs which are you know bit outputs which are stored in some register okay so there is a start register so there are sequence of registers every time a pulse comes a new set of register outputs so you have say you have register maybe these are you know three three different or eight different valves so you have stored some values so maybe when in the first step this is one this is one this is zero this is zero and this is one that's the way you have you have programmed it so when step 1 is executed then these outputs will actually go to the field so the first pulse has come and the first step is executed after the first step is executed uh, in the meantime you see that so so the first step is executed and it is and it is waiting there now this is when this has become one immediately this becomes zero and it becomes zero again so again it's enabled so now what happens is that and and an output 001 is 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 already on so therefore again it times so basically what is happening is that it is it is with this arrangement it is continuously timing and then every and the moment this op003 goes high after the timing interval this gives a pulse here so a step is executed in the sequencer and then because it's latch like this so immediately when this goes high this is again becoming reset and then once it is becoming reset it, it is this one is enabled and therefore it's again timing so it's generating continuously generating some timing intervals and at the end of each interval you are getting a pulse which is executing the start register uh, executing the sequence register of the sequencer at the end of the sequence the sequence has a fixed number of steps so at the end of the sequence this will go high so once this goes high then what happens is that this one goes off when this one goes off then this one goes off and when this one goes off then there is no more timing here and this itself that is the sequencer itself is disabled so this is the way a sequencer works now so this is this, this is what is expressed here so if you press start button i001 is a start button i002 is actually a stop button you could make the sequence stop at any times so initially all output coils off then i001 pressed then output 001 on on and latched then sequencer enabled then timer starts timing then at terminal time output 
3 goes to high and immediately sequencer steps and timer resets and immediately starts timing again that is what we explained. And this cycle repeats at the end of the sequence OP002 goes high which means that the OP001 goes low and the sequencer resets and the timer stops timing. So, this is how it works. So, we have come to the end of the lesson and in this lesson we have uh, seen the various timers and counters and we have also seen some arithmetic that data move and program control operations and finally, we had uh, seen other you know macro operations like a sequencer there are sometimes even other some other continuous mode operations also like PID etcetera which we have not seen so far. So, coming to the end we have the usual points to ponder for example, you could try to modify the die press controller such so that a, a delay is introduced between that is after the master control switch is put on and the up solenoid goes on there, there, there is a delay you can try to put that by modifying. Similarly, you could also modify the die press controller such that the number of die press cycles is actually counted. So, you say that after every 1000 presses you want to stop the machine and you want to maintain the machine. So, you want to count every time uh, a complete cycle of die there is one going up and one going down is completed and you want to count them and after you the it reached a it reaches a count you want to you want to stop the machine for maintaining. Similarly, you could improve the RLL program which is uh, which we said in our earlier points to ponder RLL program for control of a pump to keep the water level in a tank by introducing a hysteresis in your on off control cycle and the or and also sampling the water level every 30 minutes that is not continuous sampling sampling the water level every 30 minutes. So, that is all for today. Thank you very much.